Hi, I'm Maria Sanchez, and welcome to the Maria Sanchez Show on KADYTV.com. Thank you so much for your eyes. We are particularly pleased to have in studio with us Dr. Robert Levin. Dr. Robert Levin is the Health Officer and Medical Director of the Ventura County Public Health. And Dr. Levin and I have had the opportunity and the pleasure to work together in other capacities, one when I was with the, a director with the American Red Cross. But we have Dr. Levin in studio with us today to talk about pertussis, which I would think is kind of an old issue, and that's not what we're going to find out today. And also we're going to devote a segment to the program to the flu shot to get the latest information about that since flu season is about to begin. So Dr. Levin, welcome to the program. Hi Maria, how are you? I'm terrific and thank you for taking the time to visit with us. My pleasure. And we know that this is going to be the first of many, so our portals and doors are open to you at any time as the needs are dictated by the county. And why don't you just give a little brief overview of what it is that you do as the health director for the Ventura County Public Health. Well, in some ways, being the health officer in Ventura County is comparable to, to a physician being the doctor to a patient. The health officer and the health department is basically the health care provider to the county. It looks for the county's health. So we're more interested in the kinds of things that affect the population. So it might be foods that are unhealthy or contaminated. Um, it might be some new drink that's come on the market that we're concerned about. Mm -hmm. It may have to do with alcohol or tobacco. And so anything that affects the population as a whole is the business of public health. But as I understand it, that's not your only job. You also have a private practice, correct? Uh, no. Within the health department, I see children in a pediatric tuberculosis clinic. And sometimes I work in one of the county uh, pediatric clinics seeing general pediatric patients. Under the auspices of your position? Y yes. And how, are you appointed in that position? Yes. And is there a term for it? No, I, I hope not in an identifiable <laughs> future. But so, you, so it's until, until somebody decides no? Yeah, in, until I make a big mistake, I think, is, is how long I'll serve, or I become too old to report to work. But the position is selected by the health care agency director and the public health director, and then it's put up to the Board of Supervisors for approval. I see. Okay, so you, you answer to many. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and how long have you served in this position? Twelve years. Oh, wow. Wow. Good for you and good for us. Now, why are we talking about pertussis today? We shouldn't be talking about pertussis today. <laughs> pertussis is whooping cough, and we're talking about it because it's reappeared. We haven't seen this much pertussis in our nation, in our, in our state. Let's just talk about our state. This is also happening nationwide. Since uh, the, 1956, actually, is the number of cases that we're, we're, we're meeting, but it was in the early part of this century, before the vaccine came along, that we were seeing many, many cases of pertussis. So speaking of that, why don't we go to the slide that shows sure. the incidents? Uh, so Rodney, if you'll show a uh, slide. Yes, perfect. And then you can explain. Okay. You, you'll see that uh, it starts out fairly low and it peaks. There. Now you can see that there was a peak of pertussis back in the 20s and 30s. Um, if we didn't have a peak before that, it may well have been uh, just a weakness of the public health's ability to report or the inability of the medical profession to diagnose pertussis. Uh, it peaked and then the immunization was introduced uh, just around or prior to World War II and you can see that it had a major impact on the amount of pertussis and it basically, whooping cough, fell to almost zero in our nation. And then people started getting the idea that I don't need vaccines from, from my children. They're just too dangerous for my children, which is not the case. They go through a very rigorous testing with uh, uh, the FDA. And uh, enough people stop getting the vaccine that it became a problem. The way it becomes a problem is related to something called herd immunity. Uh, if you imagine a herd of cows and 95% of them are protected against something, well then, when something gets introduced, it's probably going to bump into one of the protected cows. But even if it hits one of the cows that's susceptible, it can't spread very far. Well, 
our herd immunity in our population as humans has been severely affected by the fact that people have chosen not to get vaccines for their children. Now, I know I have four children and I did all the vaccinations with all four of them. And I, it was starting when my kids were getting a little bit older, this whole philosophy about they were live viruses that were being introduced and um, there was sugar in the serum and so that that was unnecessary. And I think mercury was an issue too at one point. Mm -hmm. And so, and people, they also were saying, well, if everybody else is vaccinated and mine isn't, then that protects mine. Right. So you're saying that it's compounding that philosophy, that mentality then. Well, I think that's part of the decision to not have your children vaccinated. There's a minute risk to any vaccine, but if everyone else is vaccinated, we, we, in our head, intuitively realize there's such a thing as herd immunity, whether we've heard of it or not. And we feel, well, if everybody else is vaccinated, my kid's not going to get it. So why take even that minute little risk? There are live vaccines and killed vaccines. They've been looked at very carefully by the FDA and have been studied not only in our nation, but worldwide. And the safety record for vaccines is tremendous. Where problems have been found or just where problems are, are in the public eye because of concern, such as mercury, um, these substances have been sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly taken out of virtually all vaccines. So when folks who are listening and uh, watching us today say, well, what kind of vaccines are you speaking of? What is recommended today? And what are the ones that have been, the folk, parents have been choosing not to? There are many vaccines uh, that kids are expected to get and poor babies they do suffer a lot of injections to get all the vaccines but suffering all of those injections even if you had to get them at one time which you don't is much better than suffering one of these diseases that they're being immunized against measles is horrible um, mumps can sterilize you influenza kills people an average of 36,000 a year in our nation and you can go on and on. Pertussis is a miserable disease to watch. Whooping cough, the one we're talking about now. People just have terrible symptoms with pertussis, and we can go into that. Why don't we show the next slide then? <clears throat> so those are the symptoms that you were just alluding to. Absolutely. The, there are three stages to a pertussis infection a whooping cough infection. The first stage lasts for about two weeks and it's just like someone with a cold. You cannot tell the difference between someone with a cold and pertussis at first. Children, and the younger they are, the worse it is, are disproportionately affected by pertussis. But adults will get very, very significant coughs that will last for weeks at a time. Uh, so we have this two, three-stage thing where it begins with um, a, a cold symptom, and then it gets to this paroxysmal cough. And paroxysmal cough means basically a cough that you cannot stop. And ultimately, you cough and cough and cough, you turn red, and at the end of it, you either involuntarily vomit or you take this incredible inspiration that is a whoop. And that's where the whooping cough comes from. And then there's a recovery stage. Um, so the symptoms are, are listed here, and I think I've pretty much gone Covered through them. them. And then let's go to the next slide, if we can, because uh, we'll wrap that one up, uh, and then we'll take a break. So, Byron, can we see the next one, please? There we go. Well, this is an important thing for people to realize, and that is that approximately half the time that a child with pertussis gets pertussis, they get it from an adult. Just because we've had our childhood immunizations, and they usually are considered to have been ended by about five years of age, the pertussis immunity wanes by the time you're eight years of age or so. And so we've come up with a new pertussis vaccine. It's called the Tdap, and we're hoping that people will take it every 10 years into adulthood instead of the TD, just the tetanus diphtheria. It contains those two plus pertussis. So there's a big movement to get more and more people immunized with the Tdap. So we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Robert Levin, who is the health officer, medical director with Ventura County Public Health, uh, about pertussis. And also you've just raised something that is um, curious to me about if we adults should be getting immunizations like tetanus you're supposed to do every 10 years too. 
Uh, and then we will also go into the flu shot. And it's, since flu season is just starting, it's going to be good advice to know who should get it, who shouldn't get it, what kind of strains are in it, is it readily available, what does it cost, where can you go, et cetera. Maria Sanchez with KADYTV.com. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Peter Godinas from KDTV.com. I'm here to announce a new show that we're all excited about here called Meet the Boss. Now this is about all your friends and neighbors who own businesses and being able to support them in their causes and helping them stay healthy. So save this program in your favorites, make sure you spread it out to your friends, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all here in Ventura County. What is Service Master Clean? It's as big as braving any storm to go where we're needed most. And as little as making sure we always look our best when we get there. That's Service Master Clean. What is Service Master Clean? It's responding quickly to get fire and water damage out of your home. While keeping what you want in your home. That's Service Master Clean. Hi, Maria Sanchez here, and welcome back to the Maria Sanchez Show on KADYTV.com. We are about the county, by the county, and for the county. So if there's anything that you'd like us to know or investigate or cover or look into for you, please log on to our website at KADYTV.com, and there's a button that says Contact Us, and we'll be happy to investigate for you. We're continuing our conversation with Dr. Robert Levin, who is the Health Officer Medical Director of the Ventura County Public Health Agency, and welcome back and thank you so much for being here with us. Unfortunately, we're discussing pertussis slash whoop, whooping cough. And as one of the slides indicated prior, it was a, basically obliterated by the vaccine. And then, as you mentioned, when parents started to question whether or not they should vaccinate, as you like to say, Johnny, <laughs> and people haven't, then we're seeing a resurgence. And this is information as of 2010, July, August, September? This is right now, September. This is very current. Uh, we don't even know if we've peaked out with the outbreak, uh, the epidemic that we're seeing in California now. The number of cases, you know, the information is always a few days or weeks behind uh, what you've got plotted on the graph. So we're still not sure what direction this thing's going in. And when you say epidemic, you don't use that term lightly. So what does that mean to call something an epidemic? Epidemic is like an outbreak, but it's much more widespread. So this is throughout the nation, but specifically there are a number of states, I think five or seven, that have reached epidemic levels of pertussis. And we have this up and down our state. So um, let's look at number 17 and see what that is in terms of uh, what we want to share with our viewers about the uh, update. So there you go, as, as current as we get. Well, we know that, I think a lot of people don't really appreciate how uh, dangerous this disease, pertussis or whooping cough is. Uh, in our current epidemic in California, 12% of the cases have had to be hospitalized. It's that serious. There aren't many illnesses or infections that lead to 12% hospitalization rate. and of those people hospitalized, 60% were in infants under three months and 75% were under six months. And of the patients that were hospitalized, 80% of those infants were under six months of age and Hispanic. And why is there so many Hispanic people in those numbers? That seems disproportionate. It is. It's disproportionate to the Hispanic population of the state, which is sizable, but not that sizable. And the reason that's most likely to explain this is because the average Hispanic household tends to be bigger than the average other households in our state. And so the more people there are living close together, the more opportunities there are 
to introduce this pertussis into the family unit. And let's um, get to the next slide too so we can see what, um, there we go, wow. So this really does a good job, I think, of showing how pertussis is disproportionately found in the youngest of patients. You know, we start immunizing for it at two months of age, um, and the immunization, as I've mentioned before, is not 100% effective. It takes a while for it to build up. We give it a two months, four months, and six months, and even then, um, protection is not guaranteed. Here we see the greatest number of cases in the first month, the second month, and it starts to decrease just a little bit in the third month. And you can see this is just a disease that's terrible uh, for infants. And then I think we have one final slide, and I want to speak to you uh, about adults, too, in this regard. Is there one more slide? One more slide? Okay, I guess that was, I thought there was one more. There is. There we go. Oh, right. <laughs> um, so the recommendations the, there. The current recommendations, is this new vaccine, it's been only, only been off for about two, three years, and instead of being called the DTAP, which is the one we give kids up to seven years of age. This one's called the Tdap, which is composed of ingredients against the same three infections, diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. Uh, extra steps we're taking to utilizing the Tdap to fight this pertussis outbreak is to immunize preteens, teens, and adults with this vaccine. Um, Normally, kids are immunized until about five years of age, and then they don't get another pertussis vaccine or any kind of vaccine until about 11 years of age. Well, now we're looking for seven to nine-year-olds who, who are under-immunized, whose immunizations were not completed. We're asking their pediatricians to scrutinize their records so that they can get the vaccine. And we also want uh, children between uh, seven and nine or ten years of age who live with an infant uh, under a year of age to be immunized. There's a whole movement called cocooning where you saw how affected little ones, the littlest kids are mm -hmm. from this pertussis outbreak uh, and we know that the vaccine doesn't do a perfect job of immunizing against them. So if we can surround them, cocoon them with immunized people then it is there's a protective barrier between them and the outside world. So let's talk about adults then. Does that mean that even if we were immunized when we were young, we should be getting, is it considered a booster shot, if you will? When you were immunized and had your complete series by five years of age, we adults, we had lost most of our immunity to pertussis by about eight years of age. It's just not a vaccine that sticks around. And so... Uh, now that this new Tdap is out, we found a way of using it. Normally, adults, and this is sometimes a little known, are supposed to get a tetanus diphtheria shot, a tetanus shot every 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, now we're going to replace that tetanus shot with the Tdap, which will spread the immunity to pertussis into and throughout the adult years. And again, since 50% of the little ones that get pertussis get it from an adult, this is something we think that will have a big effect. So the T, dap, the T includes the tetanus? T um, is for tetanus. Mm -hmm. and DAP is diphtheria and acellular pertussis. And is this something that we should be hearing from our general practitioners or our internists or wh whomever we might be um, have as our health care provider? Yeah, and it wouldn't hurt for adults when they see their physicians to say, where do I stand with my immunizations? What do I need to be receiving that I haven't received? Mm -hmm. Of course, influenza is on that list every year. Um, the Tdap will be on it every 10 years. Um, as people get to be 65 years of age, they need the pneumococcal vaccine. So there's a number of vaccines that adults will benefit from. And so obviously the best person mm -hmm. to refer to is your health care, your primary health care provider. Absolutely. And then if folks don't have insurance or they don't have somebody that they have like that in their life, how do they avail themselves of this? Do free clinics or? There, there are free clinics in our county. There are clinics that have sliding scales and some of those scales are so good at sliding they'll slide off the edge of the world. There's no payment required for them. So go to one of the 
the, the clinics in our county, the, the health department has a very a widespread set of clinics. I shouldn't say the health department, the health care agency has a number of clinics throughout our county. And um, do you want to share, would that web address be something that you want to share, or is that something that you could share via your uh, web address? Yes, I'm looking for the web address. And uh, is, is it the Ventura.org? Um, it's one or I'm I trying think to think. It's VCHA. Ventura County Health. VCHA, Ventura County Healthcare Agency.org. Okay. And we have your contact information too that, that we'll share. So obviously you can good. refer to folks in that regard. Very good. Um, so having been under, I didn't have a primary healthcare physician. I just had my OBGYN forever. Mm -hmm. And finally, when I was getting, as my dad likes to say, long in the tooth, mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, you need to have an advocate that's somebody who knows what you're like well. Yes. And, and so I finally did choose an internist, mm -hmm. um, but I've, I've never discussed immunizations. It's just an annual exam that I do to get my cholesterol and, you know, the normal mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, obviously this is a conversation that needs to be had. It's a good thing to bring to the table. It's a good topic to bring up with your doc. And I should say there are a lot of OBGYNs, gynecologists, that do the primary health care for their patients. They know that they're their they're woman's general physician. Yeah, that's what she, she used to say to me. She goes, okay, I'll run more tests than I ordinarily would have. But then I just decided I wanted somebody who was going to be able to, plus I chose someone who was an Eastern Western kind of a physician too, because mm -hmm. I'm into to that. I don't know. Well, that's another day, another to okay. topic. We're going to wrap up this section of pertussis. And then when we come back, we're taking a quick break and we'll go into the seasonal flu shot, where it is, what it includes, as I have heard some rumors, and I'd like you to reinforce whether those are true or not. We have Dr. Robert Levin as our in-studio guest. I'm Maria Sanchez. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're watching KADYTV.com. Hi. This is Peter Godinas from KDTV.com. I'm here to announce a new show that we're all excited about here called Meet the Boss. Now this is about all your friends and neighbors who own businesses and being able to support them in their causes and helping them stay healthy. So save this program in your favorites. Make sure you spread it out to your friends. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all here in Ventura County. Service Master Clean. It's as big as braving any storm to go where we're needed most. And as little as making sure we always look our best when we get there. That's Service Master Clean. What is Service Master Clean? It's responding quickly to get fire and water damage out of your home. While keeping what you want in your home. That's Service Master Clean. Hi, Maria Sanchez here with the Maria Sanchez Show on KADYTV.com. Just a reminder, if you're interested in the political process at all, and of course the election is on November 2nd, we are introducing Meet the Candidates. Every candidate that is running for office that affects our county here in Ventura has been invited to come in studio and to speak with us one-on-one. -on -one. So if you haven't yet responded to the invitation or you know a candidate that you haven't seen yet on our website under Meet the Candidates, please let them know that we'd like to have them in studio. And we're continuing our conversation with Dr. Robert Levin, who is the health officer and medical director at the Ventura County Public Health. Dr. Levin, this is going to be the first of many visits with us because obviously what affects the county health-wise, we need to help get that word out. And thank you again for taking the time to be here with us. And prior to, I should let the, the, our viewers know, I said, you're so zen. You're just so centered and calm. And you said that's kind of a new philosophy that you're adopting because it's working, man. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you're just cool. Well, I'm really a nervous wreck inside. Maria. <laughs> I just want you to know you're that. You're teasing, right? But no, I, no? <laughs> I, I, you know, I feel a lot of stress and I'm trying consciously to slow down because I know it's good for me. And uh, when I'm walking fast, I say, all right, wait a second, slow down. And when I'm going to hit a deadline, I try to be at meetings on time, I say, you know what, 
you know, you can be late to meetings. You're getting older. It's all right. Tell people you had trouble getting around. <laughs> so I'm trying to chill out, but it's still a struggle. Okay. And it's a, it's a decision, I know, because I'm the mm-hmm. same way. I'm always pushing, 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 pushing. Right. And I pride myself on being on time because I think that's important too. Mm-hmm. But then life gets in the way sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just want you to know that I'm enjoying watching you be this ohm <laughs> kind of a gentleman. Let's speak about the flu shot. It's flu season. Right. And you recommend it for what demographics? Everybody. Really? Everybody six months of age and older should get a flu shot yearly. Really? Yeah. I thought it used to be till like 25 and then not again till 50. It, it and... was. It started out even before 25, just people with high-risk conditions. Uh-huh. But now it, it, it's been migrating towards a universal flu immunization, and that's where we're at now. Okay. Now, um, the only flu shot I ever got was December of last year, and I only got it because I got only the H1N1. Mm-hmm. I was with the American Red Cross at that time, and we were seeing enough of it that I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yeah. Tell me about the flu shot this year. I understand that it may include H1N1. It does include H1N1. Okay. There are three different varieties of influenza virus in it, and these are the varieties that the health you know, CDC predicts will be the circulating viruses this year. You can't know for sure, but south of the equator, we we realize that the virus migrates down there every year when it's the off season here. And so we look to Australia and other points south to see what's circulating there. And those viruses are captured and put into the new flu vaccine that is given six months later up here. Now, I have somebody who said that they would never take one unless it wasn't live, and I hear that this isn't live. There, uh, um, there are both kinds of vaccine. The, the injectable is, is just a fragmented, dead, nothing, broken up organism. There is a live nasal spray vaccine, which has very few side effects, and you don't need the shot. Now, who do you recommend what to, or is it personal preference? It's uh, by and large personal preference. The number, the years of age that the live vaccine is limited to is smaller. It's compressed right now. Um, We'll see if that doesn't expand over the years. But uh, people of any age can get the injectable kind of vaccine. And it's even okay for people who are, have have certain risk factors like uh, uh, immunity problems. And is there a cost difference between the live and the not live, or do you call it dead, <laughs> or the injectable? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm not aware that there is. And uh, last year at this time there was a shortage of the vaccine. What right. is the case today? There seems to be a lot of vaccine. If there's any shortage, it's because a preference has been given uh, for whatever reason that the smaller companies have for the private industry. So many of the pharmacies are giving the vaccine now and some public health departments don't have much in the way of vaccine. Public health department doesn't care where you get the vaccine. We just want to see people get the vaccine. And the sooner rather than later? It's, this is a, it's been available this year earlier than usual. But the immunity from it will last throughout the season. The immunity from the flu shot is about 90% chance of getting resistance to whatever viruses are circulating. And even in the following season, a year later, by the end of that season, you still have 70% immunity to viruses. So we know that even getting the shot early now instead of in October or November will protect you throughout the flu season. And if somebody got it last year, do you have to wait 12 months to get it? No, you okay. do not. You can get it even if it's at a three or four or six month interval. Really? Um, also, in terms of the, the subsidizing, do you have, have anything to speak about that? What the drug companies charge providers, healthcare agencies, pharmacies? There is a subsidization of, of the vaccine. Um, there have been vaccines distributed by the state, and there are only $15 if you qualify for the state vaccine. Uh, And this has to do with certain people who have high-risk conditions. Um, It is otherwise, uh, I actually took a moment to jot down different prices in different places. Oh, thank you. Um, Rite Aid has the vaccine now for $24.99. Walmart has it for $24. 
And for whatever reason, maybe not wanting to be left alone in their clinics, the health department has it for $23. Uh, and you can also get the Tdap. And the Tdap is available if you're one of those people who qualifies for the state vaccine, also for $15. If not, it's $70. 70 70 okay. And then the pneumococcal vaccine, the one that we want to see people either with immunity problems get or people who are 65 and older get, is $15 again if you qualify with certain high-risk conditions or $75 if you don't. And can you get them all three at the same time? The, the there's, flu? There's the, no reason not to. Really? So yeah. you can get the flu, the Tdap, and the cockle if you're 65 and older or That's compromised. Correct. Wow. And there are th folks, I have heard this time and time again, I got the flu shot and I got the flu. Is that random? Is that coincidence or, or flu-like symptoms are a side effect? The, the really flu-like symptoms are not a side effect of the flu vaccine. There's tenderness of the arm and sometimes a little bit of redness, but it's very unusual. I mean, you can even have a little bit of fever. And if you think having a little bit of fever is the flu, you know, then it could appear like the flu. But remember, this is for the most part a killed vaccine. Mm -hmm. So there's no way it can give you the flu. Remember, you're getting it during a season when the flu is circulating mm -hmm. and other viruses are circulating. And so there can be, it, it takes days for the vaccine to take effect, at least about eight days. So you can easily get the flu vaccine, the flu-like flu symptoms from other diseases that are around right. unrelated to the flu vaccine that you got. Okay. But it seems that, it, and it's one of those adages, I think, that it's people, an urban legend. Because it can't be that that many people got the immunization and then got the flu. It, it is an urban legend. Whether you look at a cost-benefit analysis of the population or a cost-benefit analysis on your own self, the flu immunization is definitely worth getting. Now, is swine flu an issue this season? Well, that's one of the three components of the vaccine. Oh, is it? Okay. So, so if it makes a recurrence, if we have that third wave, people should be protected from it. So it has H1N1 in it and swine flu and then the Well, the H1N1 is... and the swine flu are, 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 th are one and the same. Are they? I yeah. thought that... Oh, I'm they, sorry. I was thinking of the... You're thinking of the bird flu. Yes. AV, the bird flu. Yeah. And that's not included in the vaccine, but we haven't seen that really make inroads yet into the, the public. Okay. And then there was something else, too, about the Desert Valley flu or some... Uh, there's another respiratory disease co called coccidioidomycosis, coxy, de uh, valley fever. Valley fever. And we get that. It, 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 when we have the Santa Ana winds blowing from east to west, and it stirs up the topsoil of, of undeveloped land, it can bring coxy. And we'll have little coxy outbreaks in Ventura. We're not the biggest county for that. Bakersfield is, but we're in Fresno. But, um, but we'd see coxy in our county. Well, Dr. Robert Levin, thank you so much for your time uh, and all the information. It's been exhaustive, and <laughs> I'm really looking forward to going through it again. Um, we have your contact information, which we will share on the, our broadcast as well. Great. And again, you have an open invitation to be here with us at any point in time, because obviously we want to respond to the needs of the community thank you. as efficiently as possible, too. Thanks, You're welcome. Maria. And thank you so much for watching KADYTV.com. I'm Maria Sanchez. We do appreciate your eyes.